Crozier, any chance of being involved yet? Not involved, but he's uh, back training. Um, he's only just getting into full training. He's been sort of doing bits and acting as a floater, just light bits, getting him integrated into the group. Um, as much for his injury as well. Um, but no, he's, he's had a full week's training, but he doesn't need a games programme, obviously. So is there anything in organised as regards behind closed doors? Yeah, we're doors? looking at the dates now because we wanted to ensure that he came through his first full full kind of week. Um, you know, with, Obviously, it was interrupted from the international as well. Uh, but no, he, he's done well with that. And uh, he said he feels good and he's looking fit. So yeah, we, we introduced a pro, uh, games programme, sorry, as soon as the medical and the physical uh, scientists, sorry, and... Uh, Myself or a line, but it's it's very soon now. I think. Yeah, we kind of touched on it the other week as well, and maybe one player won't necessarily change everything in front of goal at the same time, can it? Well, I mean, we brought him here to offer something. That's uh, obvious. I think he's hungry. I think he's got a desire. He's worked very hard to get fit. Um, Youssef's making good progress as well. He's he's slightly behind, but he had his first full day with us actually today, um, and that's pleasing because um, he's worked very hard. Very unfortunate injury. So, yeah, there's two, two different style of centre forwards and we'll see what they offer. But first things first, to get them fully fit and get them out there playing. Obviously, the takeover is still to go through. What impact is that having on what you can do in January, be it bringing in players or letting players... Yeah, there's no news. So we're working to the, the, the current situation in the club, which is obviously, um, you know, being very, very sensible financially. Um, you know, and if, if the freaking, uh, freaking group do get hands on the club and get it done... Um, in its totality, then things might change. But at the minute, we're just working with the, the guidelines that were there before. But with those players coming back, do you even need to bring anyone in in general? Well, the thing you've seen, uh, you know, when you, when you carry a lighter squad, is if you get a few injuries, it dilutes very quickly. Um, and I've spoken about it freely. You know, on the one hand, some of the younger players get um, a feel of what it is quicker than maybe they, maybe they were ready for, in a way, but it enhances their development. On the other hand, you know, it, you lose that depth and that competitive edge. Um, for the sheer challenge of numbers. So I think if the right players and the right finance are available, and I think you're always looking in the market. So how are you with some of the other players as well, thinking Dwight McNeil, Jared Branthwaite? Dwight's come through it well, actually. has a really good week um, training. Jared uh, trained today um, after settling things down, so we'll, we'll see how he recovers. Uh, sorry, we'll see, see how he responds overnight, but we're hopeful on that and should be okay. Seamus, Jimmy and Tim still a little bit further away? Yeah, Seamus, he's on the grass, but he's with the medical side, so he's just taking the first steps back. Jimmy's had good news from the specialist, although it's still, because obviously he's been out a while now, so he's going to have to start the training uh, period again. Because uh, it's a back and forth, I had a few myself. Is you know you have to be careful in the initial spell. Uh, and Tim's is um, similar but different. It, the stress response in his foot is, is clearing up, so he can start sort of semi loading again now and making sure that he starts his progress back. Sure. How do you view the challenge now? Because you look at the stats at the minute, eighth in the form table for the last seven games, four goals conceded in that time, which is the best in the league. Yet the positivity of a few weeks ago seems to have dipped somewhat. Well, it's hard to bring positivity here on a constant basis. You know, it's, the, the clouds have been hovering around the club for so long now that, you know, we kind of get a respite and then it kind of people deem it something different. You know, the, the you know, but in-house, we, I think the players have been very positive. You know, they the players go away on international, they come back. There's always that buoyancy about, the, you know, their, their teammates coming back into the group. So it's a nice, sharp session today. They look full of energy. Um, you know, I personally thought it was a good performance down at West Ham. They've, they've spent a lot of money. They're a good outfit. And we, we had a more dominant performance away from home, I would suggest. Um, but, you know, we're, we, you've just got to keep going, you know, and, and, and try and change that story. I've spoken many times. Is You know, we, the, the feel in the camp has been good. The outside feel, as you suggest, it, 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 you know, it shifts constantly. And all we can do is work hard to get the right results to keep it going. I know the form total, of course, the stats, facts, the progression in the team, the, the adjustments and all of that. But, you know, we, we have to focus inside and just hope that everyone else comes with us. But it's been a, it's been a, a tough story to change here, as you rightly know. You know, it's been since I got here and before that. I mean, way before that. You know, it seems like a, the dark clouds are always around heaven somewhere and we've been pushing them back and then they come back and push them back again. Our job at the moment is to build on that kind of form and turn it into winning form. Um, and just continue with the consistency of, of not being beaten. And I think that's a, a valuable thing to have. How do you get the right mindset to push it back again? Because from the outside, people look at the league position, see three points off the drop zone. You're the one at the moment has to shoulder the pressure and the responsibility uh, once again as well, and scrutiny, I suppose, more than most. Well, that's standard you know, for, for Everton life as a manager. It has been for many years, so I'm no different. Um, so I've, I've, you know, it's not an enjoyable thing, by the way, but you want it to be happy times, of course, but it's part of my role and many other managers before me. Um, 
No, the players' side of things, I think they've been very resilient through my time here. You know, there are a lot of questions asked of all of us and obviously the points and all the rest of it. I couldn't be more proud of the players, to be honest. And the new additions are learning. They're getting stronger, I believe, and learning about the Premier League. And, you know, we're trying to constantly re regroup and reform a group that can be successful on a more consistent basis. And I think there's been signs of that this season. We've got to continue, you know, got to continue stepping forward. And I think the players are willing to do that, and I'm certainly willing to do that. Won three of the last four against Brentford, and the last two at home against them seemed to be important points in the season. They were around about March, April. It seemed a, a big part of, of, of what happened ultimately in the end of those campaigns. Is this potentially as big a moment? Because, again, we're talking about outside. Every moment is a big moment. Ever. And how many times you've asked me a similar but different question? Every every game is vital to Everton. Every game is vital to the fans. It's vital to me. It's vital to the players. You know, it's got that feel about Everton. Every game's a massive game. And it's another massive game for us, and we've got to take on a side that, you know, they do have ups and downs, but they're a good side, and, you know, I've got massive respect for the manager. Thanks, Vinny. Hi, Sean. <coughs> um, just back on Jar Branthway, Everton's win percentage is almost double with him in the squad than without him. From your perspective, what is it that he as an individual adds to the side when he's in it that maybe the other options don't quite have? Well, the obvious one is balance. You know, he's, he's left sided centre half, and th there's not many around. Uh, well, certainly not memory of, of the standard that he is, um, you know, and that's that's the, the the most obvious outstanding quality. There's many others, of course. You know, his size, his physicality, of course. But you know, it's 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 nice to get left and right sort of so balanced, um, and I think that's a helpful factor not just him but to the whole group. You know, if we have that balance, I think it's a helpful thing. Um, I don't think the stats are just down to him, by the way, but I think he's 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 proved to be an important part of that down my time here. Brentford, without an away win this season, still 11th in the table. What do you expect from them? They have had in those games where they haven't won on the road, there have been some, been by tight margins. Yeah, I mean, I know Thomas quite well, and, you know, the, I know about Benham a little bit, and, you know, they, they work on their margins of, you know, like you've got to progress in so many ways and certain areas to hit and certain markers to get for a performance that can win. And obviously, you want to do it right at the back, and that's always the challenge is finding the right side of it. And they've had kind of them ding dong games of score lines. Um, but over the last few years, they keep coming out on top of it, you know, as they keep going on the right side of the margins. And I think they've got some very good players, and they've got a very good manager. I, I like him personally, but I also respect him. I think he's done a brilliant job there. And I think the club have, you know, in staying calm to what they believe in, the owner as well, are just sticking to their principles, and they keep, you know, they keep going and keep adding and keep going. And I like what they do there, and I like the manager a lot. You've answered it slightly already, but it's such a tough run of games after this through December. With that in mind, how vital is it to they're all They're all points? vital. I mean, it's, and I mean it sincerely, you know, people laugh about it, but I do, you know, every game is vital in the Premier League. Every manager will tell you, oh, they should do. You know, Pep will be looking for his next one after the run they've had. You know, every game is vital. They're looking, going, everything matters. You know, everything, everything is, is a, another step, you know, if you can get it right. So it's, it's another one of them for us. We've had lots since I've been here, massive games, you know, for, for the wrong reasons in a way. You know, for when you, you're down there and you're fighting and you're having to get things done. Um, so I think we've had massive games many times, and this is another one for different reasons. You know, but it's um, we want the mentality for us to stay like that. Actually, you know, I say to every game should be a big game, should feel it's a big game. Some slightly bigger than others, of course. You know, the derby and things like that, last game of the season against Bournemouth. Of course, they're huge games, but at the end of the day, it should feel like that for every game, and that's the mentality we've been trying to grow in the group. And I think has grown, and now it's the consistency to follow it through and, and keep on the run that we're on, turn some of the draws into wins. Thanks, Alan. We'll go to Julia. Hi, Sean. Hi. Um, Excuse me. Before the break, then, the West Ham results. I was looking at the, the stats online. 18 shots and four were on target. I know we've spoken before about how you get those converted. The shots are happening. The four on target. How? What work's going on in here right now to try and turn those into goals to make the draws become wins? It's just constant practice. You know, you, you know it's, it's, goal scoring is the hardest thing in football. You know, if it wasn't, everyone would be a great goal scorer. So, you know, you, you coach, you manage, you, you try and get players in the right area. But the final moment of truth, I've said many times, and every manager will tell you, that's the bit you can't do. You know, that's the bit down to the players, the final finish, the final choice of finish. Getting them into the key areas, creating the stats or the right stats, the positive stats, that's part of what we do. The bit when they're actually out there, then that's when we tr entrust the players to find them final killer moments. One of the attacking players, Illiman and I, I know this season he's maybe surprised quite a few people and I know you'd said you weren't sure how he would necessarily step up to the Premier League and he seems to have enjoyed that challenge. 
He's played in a couple of different positions, right, left. Where do you see his best position for Everton? Well, currently, he's, he's doing well coming off the left. Um, people keep telling me I should be playing him in the number 10. There's no evidence to suggest um, he should be playing in the number 10. But people keep telling me my role as a manager, as they do. Um, but no, he, I think he can adapt into there. But number 10 is the modern number 10. You have to defend from there as well. You see Dwight McNeil doing very well on the offensive side. So on the defensive side, he's found more of a challenge. You know, it's not as easy as people think, getting the right passing lane, stopping the opposition, and then on the turnover of uh, transition of play, attacking in the right format. You know, and, and learning how to do that consistently throughout 95 minutes. So that can be developed over time. But at, th at, the, at the moment, I think he's doing a good job coming off the left. He can wriggle, he can affect, and he can drive into the box. Um, and I think he's doing well with that. So, yeah, I think he's still young in his Premier League learning, that's for sure, we know that. And he's still adapting, so we're, we're, we're letting him go a little bit whilst coaching him as well. James Tarkovsky has spoken about his frustration of not being fully fit and sort of managing to play. This break, has this allowed him to be? Is he 100% now, would you say? Is this, is this him Well, I mean, right? the, the, risk of, the risk of the style of injury, has, he's done very well to play through the, the injury and careful sort of adjustments from the medical team and from the specialist who advised. Um, and, it, and we're still monitoring his training a bit, but he's thirsty to train all the time and train hard. He was doing this week. We were going to lower it a bit, and he said, no, I want to train. Um, yeah, and it, that real sharpness that Taki has, you know, his early season was not quite there, but he kept going out there. And, um, you know, you can't, you can't do anything other than, you know, sort of marvel at his professionalism. Not just his, Michael Keane's another one. You know, he, he goes in, he plays pretty well, in my opinion, that he comes out, and then he's still cracking it out there every day. And that's the bit that, you know, people don't see. You know, a lot of admiration for these players. And back to Taki, I think he's getting fitter and sharper and stronger. And it just ask you about substitutes. I don't know if you're aware. There's been some criticism feeling that they're like for like. Criticism? Criticism no. here. Incredible. <laughs> I'm amazed. That they are like for like substitutes when maybe Everton are looking to try and change the game. Is that planned? Well, is that just what your bench is? You know that thing? There's an amazing art of football, you know, where people have these huge checkbooks and they find these players that don't or uh, are similar. We haven't got that, so therefore we're trying to develop players in different ways. So there's got to be a balance to the amount we've invested, the amount we're trying to um, improve players and work with them consistently. And trying to change a player's style in a short space of time when you've just brought them in in summer is quite tricky, I'll have you know. So we're constantly trying to develop the players. We're constantly trying to develop the team. Clips, analysis, coaching, sports science, all the rest of it. When it comes to changing the way a team operates, that's obviously, it's often down to the player. It's not always the shape. No, Pep, Pep very rarely changes his shape, you know, during a game. And he doesn't make that many substitutions. But when he does, it's often a like-for-like -like style player in the same spot. It's just that they're not like-for-like -like in their talent base. So that's a difference, you know. There's, there's often that, as well as the fact that we've got to make good decisions. And that's, that comes down to me without a shadow of a doubt. Make the right decisions at the right time. Sometimes, you know, you make the wrong decision, it pays off and you win. And everyone thinks you're a genius. That's football. Thanks, Julian. Any further questions in the open section, George? Hi, Sean. Um, I just wanted to ask about Beto and kind of what does he really have to do to start? I mean, we do a lot of fan polls and weeks now have been telling us that they believe that he deserves to start. Obviously oh, I definitely start him then. <laughs> That's you know, it. Obviously, you don't bow to fan pressure, but no, it's not about bowing. It's just that you know I see these players every single day. Side of my staff, we have a process, we work through it. We involve the players sometimes in that process. We involve the analysis team. We look at what they're doing, the stats, facts, what we're seeing with their eyes, how they're feeling, um, working with the sports science, the medical team. And then we decide when they're ready. And, of course, then you have the bank of knowledge from coaches who have had thousands of games. That's when we decide. you know. So that's the process. And so that's all it is. You've got a player who's come out of, I don't even know where, four or five years ago, he was playing a very low level of football. So he's developing all the time. And it's a big jump coming into the Premier League. And, it, and I think he is developing. But his all-round game still needs work. And his all-round awareness of the Premier League and what its demands are still needs work. So it's more of an experience factor, of course. You saw that no, it's more of a learning factor, to be honest. And, you know, you, you gain experience from every day. It's not just playing games. Of course, that's the biggest step is from playing games. But every day when we're out here, working with him, co the coaches as well. And him working very hard, by the way, just to be clear. He works very hard. He wants to learn. He wants to improve. But he knows the parts of his game, his game sorry, that we continue are looking to develop. But he must have been really pleased with that impact like, off the bench against Southampton when he was... I thought he right did very game. well. And then South against West Ham, not so well. You know, like I say, the consistency of a performance when you're coming off the bench. It's hard coming off the bench as well, by the way. But the consistency within that, of the, the, the nuts and bolts, I call it, of what the team need as well as what you need, that's the bit that we're trying to develop in. Cheers, appreciate it. Thanks, George.
Any further questions on the open section? No? Okay, thank you.